Hi, welcome to Biology B. Today we are going to learn about classify, classifying bacteria, viruses, protists, and the fungi. Uh, you should be able to explain the role of bacteria and fungi and protists on a very limited basis from this PowerPoint. So we're going to start with bacteria and viruses. They may be deadly, but they are necessary, and they're not necessarily deadly anyway. Um, okay, so bacteria. You have a couple different kinds. Um, you've got uh, gram stain bacteria, which accept the stain, and then gram negative bacteria, which do not accept the stain. So the ones that accept stain are purple, the ones that don't just show the pink, and that's how they can identify which type of bacteria it is. So we have uh, the bacteria are prokaryotes. They are rod shaped. They can also be spherical or spiral. And these are the names next to them Bacillus, Coccus, uh, Spirillum. Okay, those are the types of bacteria. Uh, they are the common majority. Um, Eubacteria is the uh, kingdom. EU means true, so in Greek, so you bacteria are true bacteria. And of course, they come right down to the bacteria. Then you also have archaebacteria. These are bacteria, the archae meaning ancient. So these are ancient bacteria. They've been around a long time. Uh, they live in extreme environments, and so this kingdom comes down to the domain archae. And we'll talk about the eukarya in a little bit. Uh, some examples of bacteria would be Streptococcus, right? So it's probably going to be spherical like this caucus. Um, tetanus, tuberculosis, cavities are even caused by bacteria. Um, bacteria can also uh, destroy things like antibiotics. They can affect things that are pasteurized, like your milk could be uh, contaminated at some point if you left it out and it got warm. All right, so you bacteria can be both heterotrophs and autotrophs. So if you uh, remember back from biology, heterotrophs eat other things. Autotrophs make their own food. Okay, uh, bacteria is traditionally um, oh, and they live they live everywhere. Uh, bacteria are traditionally uh, can be symbiotic with other organisms. For example, your intestines you have good bacteria in there interacting. Um, then you also have decomposition, which is a good thing. Breaks food down, makes it breaks anything down, makes it reusable. Um, they also help with recycling and digestion. And I guess that's it. Okay, so how could you tell if a prokaryote belongs to a eubacteria or archaebacteria? So if you think back to what I said about eubacteria, those are true bacteria. And archaebacteria are ancient bacteria. What kind of environment do the archaebacteria live in? Okay, so if you remember, like I said, the archaebacteria are part of the um, extremophiles. They live in extreme environments. Okay, so they also, um, archaebacteria also do not infect humans, and they don't have what's called peptidoclecan uh, on the outside. The eubacteria are both heart can be helpful and harmful to humans, and those have peptidoclecan on their um, cell, outer cell wall. Oh, not cell wall, but the outer cell. Um, okay, so that was our short and sweet uh, bacteria. Now we're running to a virus. So this virus, this is a bacteriophage, so it will attack bacteria. Uh, it has DNA in what's called the head. There's a little collar a sheath, um, a tail, which is this long thing that we also call a sheath, has a base plate down here at the bottom, has tail fibers, and then this whole thing from top to bottom is called a capsid. So it's kind of uh, 
sci-fi looking, I think, uh, but they're really cool. So, um, viruses um, are not alive. They don't grow. They don't develop. They don't have respiration. The only way they can replicate is um, within a host. So, for example, the flu virus, or you guys may even be more familiar with HIV. Okay, those attack cells to reproduce. Um, so, when a virus is inactivated inside a host DNA, it's considered inert, and they can do that for a while and kind of just hang around uh, until the environment is right. Um, anyway, here is a video. Uh, here's the YouTube link for it uh, on a bacteriophage T4 virus. So I'll let you guys click on it and, uh, later and look. Uh, here's the viral lytic cycle. Uh, you have lytic cycle. All virus right. takes over the replication I don't see mechanism, and it harms things. Okay, so here you've got um, virus infecting the cell, inserting DNA. Viral DNA forms circles, uh, and then it enters the lytic cycle or the lysogenic cycle. In the lytic cycle, um, more viruses are synthesized, and they are released when the cell bursts because it's too full. If they go in the lysogenic cycle, the viral DNA just inserts its DNA into the host. Um, the host replicates its DNA, undergoes mitosis, continues passing on the virus as part of the DNA um, until it's time to go viral, so to speak. Um, so the license, lysogenic cycle acts like an inert segment uh, or the, the virus in the lysogenic cycle acts like an inert segment of DNA, which I said if it's inactivated inside a host DNA, it's inert. Um, it replicates when the cell divides. Um, the cycle doesn't harm the host. Lysogenic cycle doesn't. The lytic cycle does. Um, and it can change to lytic cycle with any adverse event. So, what is it called when a virus is inactivated inside a host DNA? We just talked about it, right? It is inert. Okay. Protists. There are many different kinds, and uh, they comprise the Eukarya um, kingdom, but there's these different Animalia, Fungi, Plantae, Vertisa are part of that. Um, all Eukaryotes, most are unicellular. So, there are plant-like protists, fungi-like protists, and animal-like protists. Uh, here's the different types of plant-like protists, so maybe be familiar with algae. Uh, dinoflagellates are kind of cool. Uh, diatoms, too. These are all just really neat to look at. Uh, fungi-like proto protists would be slime or water molds. Animal-like protists, you got zooflagellates, sporozoans, ciliates, sarcodines. Um, you know, you could look those up and kind of see what is uh, going on with those. Describe two features of an animal-like protist. Um, they, oh, I forgot to tell you this, huh? So they have pseudopodia. So they have little feet that help them move. They produce spores. Um, they have food vacuoles to help digest prey. They're also called protozoas. Uh, I said they're single-celled. They're heterotrophs, <clears throat> so they eat other things. All right, fungi. Fungi is always so fun. Um, however, it's not incorrect to say fungi. Um, fungi is just fun. Okay, so fungi can be eukaryotes. They were produced both, oh, there's a typo, asexually and sexually. Um, the cell wall contains chitin, so it's a hard cell wall, complex carbohydrate. So here's a description of a fungi. Illustration. Cap has gills, it has spores that are in the gills, has a stalk, has hyphae, um, above ground and underground. Here's some images of fungi. So mold on the bread, the the oranges, that type of thing. Okay, so fungi groups include molds. 
It includes what are called club fungi. These look like clubs. Sack fungi. So those are kind of like uh, little sacks. They're bowls. Uh, and then imperfect fungi, which can affect some fruit and different things. So fungi can be both helpers or harmers. You have what are called mycorrhizae uh, that help plants grow deeper into the soil. Uh, they also um, help provide nitrogen uh, breakdown for the plants. Uh, work really well with uh, beans. They have uh, legumes. They have a... Uh, uh, oh, crud. I just forgot what I was going to say. Uh, we'll skip that. Lichens also can help create soil. They break down the rock over many, many years. So here's some cool stuff. So zombie ants. Fungi can create zombie ants but let's see okay so infection so carpenter ant is uh, infested with microscopic spores uh, it secretes an enzyme that eats through the outer shell gets into the ant and you have a uh, death grip so after a couple days the ant leaves its colony climbs to a spot where humidity and temperature are optimal for the fungus to grow crawls onto a stem or the underside of a leaf and bites into its main middle vein so it won't fall, then dies. This allows the fungus to consume the ant with the shell as a protective covering. Um, then you have what's called a stroma that comes out of the back of the head of the ant and grows. Um, the mature fungus will release spores from this. They fall to the ground creating a 10 square foot killing zone which will attack new ants. That's a pretty wide space. Um, and then uh, showing you as well here below where it says killing zone. Um, in the rainforest you have emergent trees which are at 150 feet. You have the canopy which is at 100 feet. Ant colonies start at 80 feet. Then you have the understory, which are little trees and plants at 50. You've got shrubs, uh, and then the fungal zones that last foot between the forest floor and the shrubs. So ants are always running all over, getting food, getting things, and they get infected. Uh, fungus um, also causes ringworm, not the same one that kills the zombie ant or creates the zombie ants, um, but it is uh, a different one causes ringworm. Okay, so describe one role that a bacteria, protist, and fungi play for life on Earth. Um, so, for example, the bacteria and the fungi, bacteria is recyclers, uh, so is the fungi, they help decompose things, they recycle nutrients, uh, nitrogen fixation in the soil helps fertilize, um, they use uh, bacteria to produce food and medicine like cheese, yogurt, sauerkraut, antibiotics. Um, they can be both aerobic and anaerobic. And that is it. Your exit ticket is here. I will also be placing it uh, under the announcements. And uh, you can watch that bacteriophage virus video um, at home or uh, 